Hello, dear friends. Today we are going to learn about Ukrainian drama war called Sniper the White Raven from 2022. The film is set in a very quiet neighborhood in Donetsk, Ukraine. Nikolai lives with his pregnant wife, Nastya. They are both unknown and few people know about them. Anastasia is an artist who loves to draw and carve. She even made a wooden angel for Mikola as a talisman. Mikola is a mathematician, physicist, and environmentalist who teaches at a local school. He gets to school by bike. Near their house, there is a peace sign in the form of a white crow's paw, symbolizing an ancient legend about a bird that took care of people and brought them fresh water and food, losing its feathers in the process. Due to the lack of electronics at home, the couple did not receive any news. Only when Mikola went to work did he manage to watch a few minutes of TV during his break. That's how he learned about the murdered protesters in the Ukrainian capital. He also learned about a possible Russian invasion of Ukraine. During the lesson, a student named Ivan enters Mikola's classroom and thinks his teacher is a weirdo and a pervert, so he wants him to leave. Mikola doesn't let the student get angry because he believes in pacifism and tries to direct the minds of young people in the right direction. One morning, on his way to work, Mikola notices several soldiers standing on the side of the road, but he ignores them. When he finally arrives at school, he is shocked to find the school empty, and the TV quickly explains why. Russia has invaded Ukraine. Remembering the soldiers he saw earlier, Mikola worries about his wife and rushes home. But it turns out that it's too late. The Russians are already there. They grab Mikola when he tries to protect Nastia. Convinced that they are not spies, the soldiers set fire to the house and leave. But when Nastia tries to retaliate and throws a stone at them, the soldiers do not hesitate to shoot her. After that, they finally leave. Devastated, Mikola clings to his wife's body and watches his house burn. Several hours pass after these events. Two Ukrainian policemen find Mikola and check his identity to make sure he is innocent and a simple civilian. They help him dig a grave for Nastya. Then, they take him with them to their base. Before he leaves, Mikola remembers to take a wooden angel with him as a last reminder of his wife. The superiors at the military base are not happy about the man's sudden appearance, as he might be a spy. But Nikolai quickly proves his point, saying that he wants to join the army and drive the Russians out of his native land. From that moment on, Mikola goes through a tough training program where he has to learn how to exhaust his body and use firearms. Two things the pacifist had never done before. Later, disassembling and reassembling the weapon will seem like hard work to him, and his superiors will laugh at him. Everyone also laughs when they hear Mikola announce that he has chosen the call sign Raven. But Mikola doesn't let anyone get him off his chosen path and trains hard until late at night. Mikola trains with weapons and keeps a forest angel by his side so that he never forgets his goal. His goal is to avenge his wife. A few weeks later, the cadets learn that there is a shortage of snipers at the front, and the army is looking for volunteers for this job. There are very few applicants, but Mikola immediately signs up. But he was again met with ridicule. Unwilling to give up, Mikola accepts the challenge to prove his worth. He disassembles and reassembles an AK-47 while blindfolded. It took him less than 20 seconds. Having finally earned everyone's respect, he is now known as the Crow. This is exactly what he wanted. The theoretical part of sniper training is easy for Mikola. Thanks to his knowledge of mathematics and physics, he can make calculations faster than the teachers themselves. He also flawlessly follows rule number one. Rule number one is to remain absolutely still and quiet, even when the instructor is shooting at the ground nearby. But unfortunately, he is not very good when it comes to real shooting. It turned out that for some reason, he was given a different weapon than everyone else. This weapon is not suitable for sniper shooting in war. Every time Mikola points this out, he is told that he has to figure it out himself. Once again, Mikola refuses to give up and develops a plan to prove that he is capable of passing his final sniper test. The test takes place at night, and the cadets must shoot as soon as the instructor launches a flare that illuminates the target. However, Mikola does not shoot yet. He uses the light to calculate the distance, and when the test is over, he shoots in complete darkness and hits the center of the target. No one has ever managed to do this before. This shot allows Mikola to graduate from the sniper school with the highest score and get into a first-class unit. During their first mission, Mikola and his fellow snipers have to liberate an important checkpoint captured by the Russians. Following the order, they successfully infiltrate the territory. The guy spots a target, but when they are about to shoot, the team is suddenly forced to pause their plan as a civilian car approaches the checkpoint. Soon, Russian soldiers force the two civilians to get out of the car and hand over their passports. The Russian soldiers then refuse to return the passports to the couple and ask them to leave. After the man demands his belongings back, the Russian soldier responds with violence. 
Soon, Mikola's team notices this and immediately attacks, killing each soldier with quick and accurate shots. They also hit a guy who is trying to take a civilian girl hostage. As soon as the mission is over, the team puts up a Ukrainian flag to regain control of the checkpoint. But when they return to the base, Mikola hears that his colleagues have left for another mission, so he takes the opportunity to revisit the school where he once worked. The sight of the destroyed classrooms deeply affects Mikola. The next day, when the other sniper group returns, Mikola is struck by the heavy news that one of his friends has been killed by an enemy sniper's bullet. This gives Mikola another reason to take revenge. For his next mission, Mikola hides a bundle of explosives in the trees behind the leaves and then hides in the grass, waiting for the enemy. When Russian soldiers appear in the forest, Mikola does not dare to shoot because he sees something he cannot believe. His student Ivan joins the Russian army and goes along with the rest of the enemy. He jumps to his feet when the captain orders him to shoot. Nikolai aims at the detonator and kills all the soldiers, including Ivan. When the captain asks what happened, he gets Nikolai's explanation. He replies that Ivan made his choice later, during a school break. Mikola and the captain exchange memories of their home. The captain brings photos of his family and explains that he has an agreement with his wife not to tell his daughters about the nature of his work, so they think he is just going on a business trip. In response, Mikola shows them his wooden angel. He explains that the angel symbolizes his own lost family. A few days later, Ukrainian troops manage to occupy the border trench. A sniper group takes up position and waits for the troops. After that, they prepare to invade the region. Mikola is preparing for the mission, but loses his usual calm when he notices the man who killed his wife among the enemy soldiers. Desperate for revenge, Mikola asks for permission to shoot, but the captain refuses each time because the enemy has not yet taken up the necessary position. Finally, Mikola refuses to wait and fires, hitting a soldier but giving away his location to a hidden sniper who immediately returns fire and kills the captain. As the soldiers return fire, Mikola has to drag the captain's body across the field, dodging bullets and bombs. A few hours later, when Mikola finally returns to the base, his superior promises that an investigation will be conducted to find the sniper who killed the captain, and when they finally find him, they will call on Mikola to kill the enemy. Meanwhile, Mikola is overwhelmed with guilt. He decides to go alone to correct his mistake. His sniper skills are still on top. He manages to kill many enemy soldiers. He becomes too risky and ends up getting shot in the arm by an enemy bullet. Shortly afterwards, Mikola goes to a secret hideout to recover a bit and watch the news to find out the political status of the negotiations with Russia. But he is interrupted by an important call. It turns out that the army has discovered the location of the sniper who killed their captain. So, Mikola has to return. Before the mission begins, the soldiers are told all the information they have gathered so far. The sniper's bullets are very long range. He has already killed five snipers and three machine gunners. His name is Sari. The enemy is very crazy. He records all his kills and posts videos to demoralize the soldiers. He even had the audacity to post a recording of their captain's death. All these losses have allowed the army to locate Sari, and since they can mine the place, they come up with an alternative plan. They want to destroy the soldiers from below to clear the way, and then Nikolai has to sneak in and meet Sari face to face. At the beginning of the mission, the all-Ukrainian snipers take up a position and wait for Mikola to go inside. Mikola walks across the field. The first soldier he meets is the man who attacked his house and still remembers Mikola. He says he should have killed him the first time, but Mikola kills him with one quick and accurate shot. The man signals his teammates to attack, encouraging all the snipers to open fire at the same time and check the area without raising the alarm. After that, only two enemy snipers remain alive, including Sari. They do not notice that something is wrong until they stop receiving radio messages. Sari begins to realize that everyone is dead. Meanwhile, Nicholas takes the opportunity to sneak into the building unnoticed. Sari calls for reinforcements and sends another soldier to keep order, while he returns to his seat, where he is surprised to see a small forest angel. At this very moment, Nikolai comes out and jumps on Sari to kill him with a knife, while the other soldier falls victim to a grenade that was already waiting for him. Then the reinforcements that Sari had called for arrive, and Nikolai uses Sari's radio to tell the enemy soldiers that they will pay for what they have done. As soon as the Russian truck parks, the Ukrainian soldiers open fire on it, destroying all targets. After a while, Mikola realizes that he has avenged his wife, friend, and captain. He decides to take a break and go home to visit Nastya's grave. Unfortunately, no matter how much he misses home, he cannot stay because he still has a lot of work to do for his country. In the final scene of the movie, he goes on another solo mission. Mikola is ready to destroy as many villainous soldiers as it takes, 